<clears throat> All right, guys. Second video. Um, I did a little bit of uh, shooting with those loads, and unfortunately, the camera went flat. Well, I got all everything set up, and the camera was flat. So well, I thought, well, I mean, everything's set up. So I did the shooting anyway. Didn't video it, but that's okay because it was all just chronograph shooting. But I've got the results here on my load chart, which we'll go through and have a look. Um, and I have made a decision about whether I'm going to keep that this caliber or go up. But I'll show you from the uh, results quickly. So um, these numbers here, just remember that these are the, the this is the amount of grains of powder. Um, we are put we were pushing this caliber to the point of pressure signs so some of those might be quite high and um, I've noted on here when we did hit pressure and what our max load was but anyway I hope you can see this Let's see if I can zoom in a little more yeah you should be able to read that right so first things first the 162 seated nicely in the magazine close to the lens which was good <clears throat> so started at 44 um, went up to 44.5 44.6 called that my max because I started hitting pressure signs at 44.6 we had a speed of two Ooh. come on camera 2722 average out of a 22 inch barrel um, so that was right actually that was pretty good so the 162 and the 708 is that's pretty good uh, it's a good round for a full length barrel and the 180 grain um, did a few tried a few different things uh, going long and short um, and in the latter test we hit pressure at 42.7 grains um, so came back down to 42.5 and it seemed to wane off so yeah um, and the speed at 42.5 which was still a it's a hot load but it's fine was 2520 um, so yeah just <clears throat> before i brought the rifle i kind of hoped that we'd get around 2.5 with the 180 uh, and yeah which is good but sort of decided that um i could push it like that but i've actually sent the gun down to gunworks in christchurch and it's going to be rechambered into the 284 Okay, so with this load here with a 22 inch barrel, um, if I put that into my ballistics calculator, it actually still holds um, 1,000 foot pounds of energy and 1,600 feet per second, which is important, at 900 yards. So that's, that's good, but <clears throat> we're going to be docking this back to not 17.5 but it's actually going to be docked back to 15.5 inches which is we're starting to drop probably around 2600 feet in the 7 below 8 which is not really that crash hot so we have sent it away for the 284 and i'm hoping that we get the 162 in a 15 and a half inch barrel i'm hoping that we pick it up to about between 2750 to 28 and the 180 um, I'm hoping in the 284 we pick that up to 2650 to, to 27 that's oh, probably pushing it a bit but that's what I'm hoping um, and then working out an accurate load I will be using Reloader 17 and I did a bit of research and IMR 4451 seems to be a really good powder in the 708 
So we're going to try it also in the 284. Just for a bit of fun. Some of the cartridges lined up next to each other. So start here. This is a 300 Weatherby Magnum. Shoulder charger. 7mm mag, rim mag. Um, shooting the same bullet as what we're shooting. 270. Underestimated cartridge. Everyone just loads a 130, factory, whatever. You load a Oops. You load a good bullet with that. With some good powder, some of that new powder, the 7977, it's good. Very good. There's the 284. 308. 7mm 8. And the Creedmoor, 6.5 Creedmoor, which is probably still my favourite calibre. Until this gets done, hopefully. <laughs> But that is that is a cool caliber. It's so low recoil and with a good bullet, it really does does kill. <clears throat> All right, guys. So the gun is back. Um, so it's all it's all shortened. <clears throat> I'll just take the suppressor off to show you how short it really is. Uh, very short. So yeah. It's good. Nice and short. So I've got obviously shortened, threaded, suppressor fitted, bolt fluted, got it engraved as well with the caliber, which I'll show you too. Um but yeah, looks really good. Uh, as well inside the chamber when you look in there it's been all cleaned up too which is good if you use a 7 mm 8 so if you use a 7 by 57 you don't you don't get that nice um, you don't clean the whole bore up so it just gives your brass a bit better too so I'll show you the uh, take it in I'll just show you the fluting and which is quite cool I've never had a Nicely fluted bolt before, but looks quite nice. And then on the other side, I kind of wanted this just so if I ever sell the rifle that it, with the with the serial number, the caliber is correct to it. But yeah, so it's back, which is cool. So we're gonna start. Some bedding, some bedding, and some loading. So the barrel did come back at 15 and a half inches. Um, I just weighed the gun exactly how it is, and it was so with the suppressor, the bipod scope. Um, it was 2.3.9 uh, kilos, so it's not too bad. It's not super light, but take the bipod off, it would be a bit better. But um, no, it's good, it's cool. So another reason why I personally like the short barrels is because they tend not to be as whippy um, for accuracy. I think the downside to them is that you tend not to get as many shots out of, out of it because you don't have that big area for um, spreading the heat, the bigger surface area. Um, but I've done quite a few 308s right down to 14 inch barrels and they tend to just be more accurate simply because they're more rigid. Um, so that's kind of nice, like it's to the point where <clears throat> you just pick on the chart where you want for your load development and that's where usually where it'll sit at half an inch group. So, that's so I wanted to go over the build cost because that's pretty much what determines whether you can actually do this or not. Um, and so I've written everything down, everything, just to give it an honest uh, what it actually cost me. And so 
all up, it was two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, Five hundred and fifty of that was from Gunworks, so that was to supply the dies, to flute the bolt, to engrave the caliber, to cut the barrel, and to fit the suppressor and thread the suppressor. Um, then the gun was six hundred. Scope cost me four fifty. Rings were fifty dollars. Um, bipod was forty bucks, and I got the suppressor on Trade Me second hand for 250 bucks so I worked calculated if I was to do this with a ticker um, it would have cost me three two basically so for me that's yeah um, that's a saving it's worth it for me now the only difference between this and the ticker will be that the they had to cut it with a short throat reamer because the magazine was simply not long as long as a long action. Um, so I'm picking, I don't really know what we'll lose for capacity and velocity and all that. Um, but I don't think it, sh it shouldn't be too bad. Well, uh, uh, my 270 that I've got over there, um, that runs a compressed load in it. I, prefer having the bullet seated onto the powder anyway um, and it seems to shoot quickly and fine so we'll see how we go right first shot I've cleaned the barrel put the first shot is uh, 162 ELD ladder testing uh, so we'll see how we go with this for velocity First load, 2473, absolutely no precious signs whatsoever. Okay, so we've come up a grain now on the loading, we'll see how this goes. pressure there so that was sticky bolt and primer pressure so that's um, too hot for this temperature so we'll put the two 2180 grains through it ah sorry see how we go for speed I'll just chop that down a bit probably let that cool down first though right one 180 grain. First shot. Whoa. Definitely pressure. Definitely pressure. Pressure signs there. So we'll not be going higher than that. Alrighty, so here are the results of our ladder test. Um, and to be perfectly honest, <clears throat> um, it was a little bit disappointing, but you may see some of these numbers here. So for the 162. Um, we're 49, 50 grains. I actually managed to, um, so 2534. I actually managed to um, buy, um, playing around with the length a little bit, we actually managed to get a little bit more in that case and get that speed up quite a bit. So it is not 
it's shooting, I can't remember the grains actually, it's 51 point something. Um, quite a hot load, but it's still shooting 2640 I believe it is, which is okay. Uh, 180 grain was just disappointing. Um, you'd probably get that at 2.4 at the max. So I, um, I made a few phone calls about why that was because other guys are running a lot more a lot more grains of powder on these and was told that it's probably my brass. This Bertram brass is um, very thick, very heavy so you lose some of your capacity so what I want to do is I'm just going to leave it at my 162 load but later on um, I would like to do the 180 with some Norma 6.5284 brass reformed and hopefully we should pick up two two and a half grains of powder capacity which will mean that we'll get that nice big bullet going quite a bit quicker so I think the brass on this lets this down um, so with with the proper brass we'd be getting you know another 150 feet per second um, or maybe not quite that much but but yeah for now I don't have um, heaps and heaps of time to get it really really right but what I will say is if you're going to do one of these just bite the bullet and go and get the 6.5284 brass and reform it. I think it's worth it because I'm pushing this stuff pretty hard anyway. So yeah, but other than that, it's all good. It's okay. Um, pretty happy with it still. It's still a nice short little rifle that's nice to shoot, nice to carry and still packs a fair bit of punch. So the next stage now is um, we've done a ladder test um, we did shoot just a on the page group with our hot 162 and it did shoot under an inch so that's promising but um, now we're going to get into bedding which is the final part of accurizing the thing um, and so I've got that and we'll do those videos fairly clear just so get your head around what bedding requires and yeah so we'll get into that um, and then start shooting groups so we found our max loads we don't want to go any hotter than those at all um, you wouldn't want to turn up to a uh, competition with these loads either the hunting loads so two three shots that's it otherwise you start cooking cooking some pretty high pressure so yeah we'll get into the bedding um, and see if we can pull that group tighter yeah all right guys uh, bedding bedding job time I really enjoy this so I just take my time though you're not trying to win any races with it um, so for it we will be because we talked about in the first video with this trigger guard thing in here with the pillar to pillar we're not going to bed any of the um, back of the action so what we're going to do is bed the recoil lug here back to the magazine and then we're also going to come forward probably an inch and a half and just bed that whole barrel locking nut there and everything just so we get a nice platform that the rifle can sit in nice and tight so get into it tonight we'll be just prepping the stock with a dremel and yeah another night I'll pour the compound in and show you how to do that and uh, I'll just check you know we've done some shots with this barrel and I'll just check that we're not actually touching anywhere, which we're not. So we're still nicely free floated, which is good. So there's the old, I don't know if you can see that. This is the old um, 7 8 Savage Axis. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. 
the cheese nicely put on the bottom. So we've got the new 284 caliber. Let's go. Cool. Alright. Lay that aside. Drop, drop our mag out. Cool. Alright. So we right, will start. So I'm going to just rough this area up here. Through here, through here. I'm going to do that recoil like. I'm going to bed that in there solid so that you can't pull it out. And then I'm going to rough all this edge up in here. You get the point. Um, I've also drilled some holes in here just to because I'm a builder and I might like to make footings that key in. <laughs> but yeah, I'll keep cleaning this area, these areas up, till there's no sort of bits that stick out. And then that is pretty well ready to go, we'll give it a degrees as well, just so it binds as best as we can. Right, so here it is, sort of a bird's eye view. What I've done, you can see a gap on each side of that recoil lock, so I've sort of chamfered into the uh, and I've put the recoil lug in there and then done up the front bolt so that recoil lug is pressed into there in the right place and we're going to epoxy down into there and that's just going to hold that in there a bit better um, but other than that that is ready to go now I'm going to get the plaster seen and uh, make some dams Right. Um. So in these kits you get a release agent and you get a whole half a block of plasticine. Cool, because it saves you from going, getting ripped off from some warehouse stationery or something like that. So, what we're doing here is, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to, so usually this is where your magazine sits. So with our plasticine, what we're going to do is we're going to fill this whole magazine well up and as well as we're going to put a dam in the front just up here which will kind of neatly finish off um, where we want our bedding to end and so I'll do that one first I usually just get my plasticine and roll kind of a thin um, thin little bit, long thin like that, and then I just drop it in here where I want to go, and I'm going to go about an inch and a half forward of the recoil lug, which is a bit nor like usually you go maybe three quarters of an inch, twenty mil, something like that. 
but because I don't really have a lot of faith in, well, because we can't really bed any thing in the back, I'm going to go a bit more just to give it a bigger, um, bigger area to rock, rock, rock on. Right, so that's there. And simply all I do is let's lighten this baby up and take the suppressor off. Put that in our box. Take the bolt out. And I guess you would be wise to take the scope off if you really if it was your first time doing it or something you don't want to but it um, sh should be alright so the barrel feels slippery enough just to place down there now as it is so we're just simply placing the rifle in there and then just giving that a good old squeeze <laughs> So there we've set the height for that dam to the to the barrel. But we don't quite have a good enough bridge. So I'll just roll a tiny sliver more. As in it will be just a couple of mil thick. I guess yeah. I do this just to make the job nice and square because I I guess it's the same mentality in my mind as a crowning or barrel so you want it you know you don't you want it square and just everything nicely shaped so that you heighten your chance well chance you heighten accuracy to the maximum Right, so we'll place that in there. <laughs> Make sure we're actually in the recoil lug. Give that a good old squeeze. <laughs> okay, there's our dam. Which is formed quite nicely. So, um, get a craft knife. With my craft knife. Or Stanley knife, whatever. I'll just cut that nice and square. And that means that where my bedding finishes, it's going to finish square and neat against that dam. So it's not going to pour all through my stock stabilizing kit. And here we've got some good, good amount of thickness on there too, because you know that's actually touching the barrel. And so I just, if you, I don't know if you can see on the actual barrel, but it's you can see where the dam has made a mark right there. So we're actually bedding onto the barrel now. So I'll measure that. So I think that's actually uh, quite far. I oh, know. It's about 35 millimeters. So yeah, it's it's just under an inch and a half. Just dropped a bit of plasticine in there. Right. So it's the first dam. Now the back, that's quite good if you have a piece of polystyrene or something, you can just whip in there. I don't think I do. No, but that's right. I don't really care if I use a whole block of plasticine. It's just a bit easier to get out if you've got polystyrene. So grab this. <clears throat> Just 
tilt the camera up a bit. And so we're not going to put, so I just, I have the gun sitting down there and I'm just sort of looking at the rifle and I can see the hole for the triggers there and there's nothing in here. So I, I don't want to really want to put, I mean, we're going to test it, but I don't want to put anything that's going to obstruct the rifle to sit in exactly how it sits in when you bolted it together. Understanding why you do this for gaining accuracy is helpful too. To understand that, you know, if someone said, Oh, you've just got to bid your rifle and it would be better, my first question would be like, Well, what do you mean? Why do you do that? And the reason being is, um, they're not so bad anymore with the plastic stocks because they tend, they don't move as much as wood. The old timber stocks moved. You could even bed your rifle and you could be up for a new bedding job, you know, after a, a raining hunting trip or something that were that bad. But it's just impossible to stop timber moving, but the plastic ones nowadays are pretty good. But the reason why you do it is because you're trying to create a consistent harmonic through the rifle. And by putting a super rock hard epoxy between the two materials, you reduce, uh, after a recoil, you reduce, so after you shoot the thing, you heavily reduce the amount of movement that goes on in the, in the stock between the barrel, between the action and the stock. So you're creating a consistent harmonic, which is all accuracy is, kind of the same concept of playing a guitar really, it's the same sort of thing. So you're just trying to get that harmonic the same every time. So yeah, and then free floating it obviously is the same concept. You allow the barrel to, to move freely it moves consistently because it's not touching anything. When your barrel's touching, I know that the rifles come out like that from factory, but all that does is reduce the amount of barrel whip. So you tend to get okay accuracy with sort of your factory ammunition and that. But it's a bit of a cheat, cheats way of, of destroying harmonics or suppressing harmonics rather than trying to work with them I guess right so that's the second dam so that means that we're not going to get epoxy or well, we will get a bit of epoxy so what I've done with this dam just to explain it so I have hollowed out the middle as well so in here, it's quite a bit lower, and then it curves up to the back part here. So I don't want any excess. From here, I know that it's not gonna travel forward because of that dam there. So I want it to travel out, and I want this to travel out, but whatever's left, I want to travel back but what I'll do is I'll also put a little dam um, right up here going up to this other side so that if it travels out and up and that we get all of this this whole area is is consistently touching the action so that's going to give us 95 millimeters of um, a bedding base which is good, which is what we want. 
Um, yeah, with this rifle, I would usually, I can't do it with this rifle, because usually a bolt is all the way back in here, but I'd usually bed the whole tang all the way back, right back past the trigger, just so my base is as good as I can possibly make it. Because um, you get, not sure, it's just how I work in my mind, is by the time I come to my shooting my groups, I want to have done absolutely everything that I can in my skill base, whatever, to ensure that I've done what I can to get, to eliminate factors that are going to affect my accuracy. Yeah, because you might spend an extra, you know, whatever, $90 doing all these things to your rifle, trigger, and, and um, bedding, and all that sort of stuff, stock stabilizing, but you're not going to be at the range banging away ammo pointlessly, scratching your head, because if it happens, when it happens, it's really horrible, it just turns into, oh, I should sell it, that's usually what happens, oh, I can't get it to shoot right, but if you just build up from your base correct you kind of um, I don't know I see it kind of like you're pulling the stickers off the Rubik's Cube of accuracy so yeah pop that in there <clears throat> I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna do the beating tonight just because I like to take my time with it I'll do that on the weekend hopefully this doesn't stick Yep, no, happy. Happy with that. Yep, so it's just touched here and here. And then our barrel one is really, really nice. I don't know. Oh, you can't see that from there. I'll pull the camera over and you can have a better look. Oh, it's kind of struggling, isn't it? So there you have it. There's all the dams ready to roll. So we'll degrease it. Come back to it tomorrow. Alrighty guys. So we're doing the bedding tonight. So, you know, the other time we last last night we did that to the dams and prep the stock, which is cool. <clears throat> and um, what I've done here is just put my release agent on so I put it all all the way up to the front of the barrel through the nut where the recoil lug sits back in the screw hole back here down through here done one coat and I've also done the screw um, which we'll be using but do another coat because we've got enough yeah can use this and I'll just straighten the camera up. She's pretty crooked. There you go. Oh. Alright. I used to use um, Brie Wax as well before these kits came with stuff in it. And I still find the Brie Wax um, works pretty good. Set um, Brie Wax polish and shine, but I'll just use this. Comes with it. Why not? Now, I know there are other products you can use, but you just research them before you use them, I guess, because you don't want to stick your gun together. Okay, so it's sat there nicely. So we got our dams in release agent on so we are ready oh, sorry I'll just turn that screen around we're ready to do this now what we don't really want to do is under fill it so I'm going to start by 
filling in those voids and I'll start there get those filled in and I'll let those actually sink in go around the recoil lug down into the void another void right then I'll let that sink while I fill the front in so it's going to take the most want to get right up to our dam okay better off overfilling it a little bit letting it getting a good squirt up out the sides there definitely then underfilling it if you underfill it basically you need to do it again I don't know if you can actually see right so we're pretty much we're getting there we're starting to so definitely got enough around the recoil luck like. right let that sit there for a bit cool so there's now those vo voids are starting to open up again as the stuff runs down there which is good yeah i think we're cool we're probably actually a little high in here a little bit too much yeah definitely got too much in there but that's all right so I'll do that, I'll let that sit. Then what I'll do is just get a little bit of tape. Just protects the stock a bit better. And I'll just chuck that tape up on there. And I'll get my knife. And all I'm doing is just Slicing right. Oh, come on. Actually, you don't need to do there. Slicing along there. Could really, should really do this before I put the epoxy in, but it's all good. it so when it does spill out it actually just spills all over the tape so yeah, I'll do that you get the idea that's it bedded down in there so cleaned up the excess here just flat level just flushed it off because that is going to suck back a little bit as it dries but happy with that you can see that a little bit down in here is spilled back out the back out into the magazine well which is onto our um uh what do you call it <clears throat> onto our plasticine um dam which is exactly what we wanted to happen um but yeah no that'll be good so i've tightened this this action screw up tight and i've checked by just pushing down on the barrel there's no movement up the back here um, so when we put this screw in which we'll have not as tight it should be um, it should do the trick I'll just leave my little pot down underneath with the the excess compound just so it gives me something to know when when it's dry so I'll just test it. But yeah, that's it guys. Done.